Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Tonight, but a few hours from now, amateur astronomers will be watching the skies over Pittsburgh because there is a chance that two old spacecraft may collide at a speed of 14.7 kilometers per second, which is pretty scary because the kinetic energy equivalent kilogram for kilogram is about 27 times its mass in TNT. The two spacecraft are, well, IRAS, which everyone should know, it's one of the first infrared space telescopes. It did a complete sky survey. It was launched in 1983 and operated for 10 months until its uh, sensors ran out of helium to cool them. But in that time, it discovered all, almost all of the important uh, infrared sources in the sky. Many studies still use IRAS catalog numbers. This satellite is about the size of a small car. It weighs about one ton with, you know, with dimensions of about two to three meters in each axis. The other spacecraft is less well known. It was launched in 1967 under the name GGSE-4, Gravity Gradient Stabilization Experiment 4. That was just a cover. Its real name was Poppy 7, I believe. It was launched with four other Poppy satellites. They were NRO, um, electronic intelligence satellites. So they would fly in a formation and pick up signals from places in the world. And by looking at the time difference between the arrival, they could actually locate it on the surface and collect all sorts of classified information, most of which is still classified. That spacecraft is relatively small. It's about, you know, a couple of feet, you know, less than a meter across. Uh, it's a sphere, but the stabilization experiment that was added was an 18 meter long boom with a mass on the end of it, supposedly to keep it stable in the gravity gradient of the Earth. The idea being that the mass gets pulled out and it points radially outward throughout the orbit, holding the satellite in the correct orientation. Now, it's not clear how well that's working, whether it's still in this orientation, but it seems likely that you even 60, was it? Yeah, 50 years on, it's still in that configuration. So as of right now, the latest information puts a collision chance of about 1 in 20. Although over the last few days, as the orbits have evolved, the chance has gone from 100, 1 in 100 to 1 in 1,000. The information comes from a company called LEO Labs. They have a series of three radar sites around the world, which they're using to track satellites and space debris. Uh, they've got something like you know, 15,000 or thereabouts objects catalogued and they sell this information to interested parties. Obviously, there's a lot of interested parties in this. So the potential encounter happens over roughly over where Pittsburgh is in the United States, 900 kilometers up at about 6.39 p.m. So on the West Coast for us, that'll be 3.39. Now, because they're up 900 kilometers, you don't have to be in Pittsburgh. You, there's a fairly large radius around it where you will be able to see this event happening. But even at the closest, IRAS is only a magnitude five satellite. So you, you either require very dark skies or you're gonna require equipment which is gonna be able to look and track these objects. So yeah, the time is well established. There will be a lot of people looking for it. And yeah, well, let's hope this doesn't collide because obviously this would be bad for low Earth orbit. We would have a bunch of debris falling down on polar orbits through many other satellites. But also, IRAS is such an icon. I mean, like, it would be such a shame to lose this sort of monument to early infrared astronomy. Astronomers owe so much to that. But yeah, um, oh God, we hope this is okay. Also, if you are out tonight in the Northern Hemisphere, look just after dark, there's a pretty good chance you will see Starlink satellites. Check the satellite prediction uh, website because SpaceX just did a, sa a Starlink launch and they will be all clustered together in their low drag, very bright configuration at low orbit. So this is the best time to see them. As they go up, they switch to a lower um, brightness configuration and they're much further away. So yes, uh, watch the skies. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.